Hi there all my crafty friends. Are you ready for some Easter projects? This is going to be the first one of the year. I'll be decoupaging the cutest bunny on an egg-shaped MDF board, along with some 3D clay and paper flowers. I have some really cute Easter projects planned this year, and one of them will be a reverse decoupage Easter plate. So if you're ready, let's make a mess. Look at this awesome egg-shaped MDF board. It has an adorable pattern on the front of it, but I have a different vision, so I'm turning it over and starting fresh. I'm giving it two coats of an off-white paint, and I'll let it dry for about an hour. This board is pre-sanded and ready to go. It's just one of many you can find at decoupagenapkins.com. In fact, I'll be using a lot of their products today for this project. This MDF board, the rice paper, Pentart paint and antique paste, polyvine heavy duty wood varnish and decorators varnish, Stamperia air dry clay and Prima paper flowers, along with polyvine's paintbrush for varnish. I'm going to decoupage this adorable bunny to the egg. I'm removing the bottom and white edges using a water brush. It's so convenient to do it using the water brush. I have it listed in my favorite tools section of my description box below, in case you want to check it out. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you are all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. And it's chilly here today, but the sun is shining. I'm using Polyvine Decorators Varnish as my decoupage glue. It works so much better than Mod Podge. I'm brushing it on one half and laying down the paper. Then I'll brush it on the other half and lay the paper down as well. I put a cut piece of a Ziploc bag to smooth out any bubbles. And now I'm giving it another coat of the varnish. I'll let that dry for about an hour. I'm using some sandpaper to cut off the excess paper. It shears it off perfectly and leaves a nice clean edge. This paint is just the perfect color. I love that it matches the dark part of the background color. I'm going to add a little bit of white to lighten it up some for a part of the process. It also needed just a smidge of yellow to match the lighter areas. I'm using Pentart paints today and I love them. It's really thick and creamy and goes on so smoothly. I'm using a sponge to gently dab the color at the top and bottom of the egg where there is no rice paper. I'm also putting it around the entire edge of the board to make everything blend together. I had to mix up a yellowish green for around the ears to make it blend with the existing rice paper. And then I blended the peachy color in with it. The secret to making it all blend is putting your new colors in with the existing colors. That way if it doesn't match exactly, it looks like it was part of the color in the rice paper originally. Voila, blends perfectly. DecoupageNapkins.com has such a great selection of rice papers as well as napkins that you can purchase one at a time. Rub-on transfers, molds, modeling clay, stencils, stamps, scrapbook paper, and much more. Over 7,000 products. They carry three lines of paint. 
Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint, clay mud paint, and pentart paints in a wide range of colors. They are wonderful to work with and send out their orders fast. They are truly your one-stop shop for craft supplies. They offer several automatic discounts when checking out on orders over $50, $75, and $125. Subscribe to their newsletter by entering your email address and you'll receive 10% off your next order. Make sure you check them out. I'll leave you some links in my description box below. I used some of this peachy paint in its true color and sponged it around the entire edge of the egg to match some of the dark color in the background. The dark color on the edge gives it a nice 3D look. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And why not share this with a friend? Thanks for doing that. I let the paint dry for about 30 minutes and now I'm giving the whole thing a coat of Polyvine Heavy Duty Wood Varnish. Polyvine makes several different formulas and this one is heavily resistant to moisture and heat, which makes it perfect for projects that will be exposed to water and heat. All polyvine varnishes are UV resistant, so you can put your creations in sunlight without fear of fading. I'm using a special paintbrush that is made by Polyvine specifically for their varnishes. It's wonderful and spreads the varnish out nicely, eliminating brush marks. I'm using some Stamperia air dry clay to make a leaf trim. I brushed some cornstarch in the mold and then added the clay. I removed the clay while it was still wet. I let it partially dry for about 20 minutes. This clay is really soft and nice to work with. I like it a lot. I'm gluing the trim to the board with some wood glue. I tried some of the green paint to make sure it was going to match and it matches great. But I accidentally broke a piece of the clay off on the top and the bottom pieces, which isn't a big deal at all. Once I glue them to the plaque, they'll fit together seamlessly. And what's funny is I ended up putting some flowers and leaves on the bottom so you end up barely able to see this trim. <laughs> my project always take a sharp turn here and there. I change my mind or I think of something better to do. They morph as I go. Do you guys do that too? Let me know in the comments how your projects change. Now I'm going to paint this trim with this beautiful paint that will barely be seen. I'm working on some great spring projects for the upcoming weeks. I'll be doing some decoupage, 3D air dry clay, and mixed media canvases. I am going to do a series of reverse decoupage clear glass plates with some really different and fun techniques on each one. You'll want to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. I let the paint dry for about 30 minutes and then gave the entire thing a coat of the Polyvine Heavy Duty Wood Varnish and let that dry for about an hour. Now it's time to antique the trim to give it some depth. I mixed up some dark brown paint with water to make it runny. I'm brushing it on and then wiping it off right away with a soft cloth. This makes all the details in the mold stand out. If you'd like to be notified anytime I upload a new video, click the bell. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of a vintage look by adding some antique paste around the edges of the board. 
All the products and tools I use and recommend in my videos have been tested by me. I won't suggest something that I haven't used myself. Each product will be listed in my description box below and we'll have a blue link to make it easy for you to find. Any of the links I provide are safe for you to click on. I'm using Pentart gold paint around the side of the board. This is the nicest gold paint I've ever used. Most metallic paints don't cover well and are slightly translucent. This one isn't like that. It has amazing coverage. I'm using a little bit of gold antique paste around the very edge of the board, right on top of the brown antique. It just adds a little bit of shimmer and brings the gold from the sides up to the top edge of the board. I also added a little bit to the leaf trim. I let all the antique dry for about 30 minutes and then added a final coat of the Polyvine Heavy Duty Wood Varnish. I let that dry for about 45 minutes. While the varnish was drying, I made a cute bow with my mini Bowdabra bow maker. This makes bow making easy. I have it listed in my favorite tools section of my description box below, in case you'd like to check it out. I used some cream lace, green ribbon, and peach ribbon to make my bow. I tied it all together with some twine. These flowers are by Stamperia and are so, so pretty. They have little shimmery embellishments on them. I'm going to put a few of them on the bottom. The leaves I'm using are called lamb's ears. Isn't that cute? They're really fuzzy, which gives them a frosted appearance. Don't forget, all of the wonderful products I'm using today can be found at my favorite place for craft supplies, decoupagenapkins.com. And I'll leave you links in my description box below. I decided to put a little bow made of twine in the center of the large bow which gave it a little bit of a farmhouse look. And here's where I ended up covering the trim. <laughs> I thought the bottom looked too bare, so I added more leaves. I painted the back and off-white, just like I did on the front before I added the rice paper just because I like the backs of my projects to look finished as well. It gives it a high-end look. Then I added a hanger using some large twine. I glued it to the back with my hot glue gun. Anytime I cut something that will unravel, I put a little bit of hot glue on it before cutting. It holds everything in place. I'm using a Shore Bonder cordless glue gun. I absolutely love this glue gun. It's so nice to work without fighting a cord that's in your way all the time. I have this listed in my favorite tools section in my description box below, in case you wanna check it out. I covered up the ends of the twine with a piece of lace from the bow. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner so you don't miss any future videos.